Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. This week, I'm just going to show you how I have multiple cameras set up in Zoom. I do it in more than one way, and there's a few simpler ways to do it, and then there's more complicated ways to do it. And I'll show you the benefits of doing it the more complicated ways. Sometimes simpler is better, though, I suppose. The simplest way I've mentioned in previous videos, and that is to just use your phone as another camera. So within Zoom, if I have my phone set as another as a contact, then I can invite myself to the call, and then it will ring on my phone, so I can answer it. Then I'll have to let myself into the meeting, obviously. And I'm just, I'm gonna cancel, it says, Cool using internet audio. I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to include the sound because it'll start a feedback loop. So now I actually have another camera in Zoom. So if I put this into a gallery view, there's now two cameras. It's quite cool actually because I can actually use it to look around the room. So if I flip the camera so that I'm looking through the front camera, so I can now use it to look over here, like there's a mixing desk there. So say if I was doing a lesson about the mixing desk, I could actually go over to the mixer and zoom in on it quite closely and show people what's going on there. And that's actually more useful than, than using one of the more complicated setups actually in that instance. The second way that I quite often use it is I just have a webcam. And when you have a webcam in Zoom, you can use you can use two webcams, so I can use the webcam that's in my MacBook Pro, and I can use an external webcam. This is the Logitech um, C920. Um, there's a shortcut for this as well, which is if you press Command Shift N, so it's probably Control Shift N on a PC, that switches cameras. So now you can see we're on this wide camera, and then I will have to, to press it twice to go back. I'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> okay, so I can switch cameras like that, which is pretty useful. Um, I can actually use three cameras with this, fairly straightforwardly, actually. If you own a Canon camera that's relatively new, and I say relatively new, I think that this camera that I'm using is an 80D. It isn't that new, it is, um, maybe four or five years old, something like that. They've now released a, a piece of software to use your camera as a webcam. And I know GoPro have done the same with anything from a Hero 8 onwards. And I'm sure that if you have a look, if you've got some cameras lying around, it's worth just looking into whether they've released an application for you to be able to use that as a webcam. So if I switch this camera on up here, Plug it in. We now have a third shot, which is the webcam. The downside to it, as you saw then, is it does take longer for that to switch on. You can see though that actually the image quality from this camera is brilliant. And whilst the 80D doesn't autofocus over HDMI, it does autofocus over this new utility, which is pretty cool. When it when you use autofocus over HDMI, you, there's a little box in the middle. So when we're using this for live streaming, which is what I use these these better cameras for, we use them for live streaming. I'll post a, there's a link to a video here about the work that we do there. We, we manually focus the cameras anyway. This poses a problem that you might be able to see already, which is that the audio and the video aren't in sync. So if I clap, you can see that my clap happens later than the audio comes through. And that brings me on to the last solution, which is actually to use a multiple camera switcher. 
But before we carry on with that, please do like the video and please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps with what I'm doing. It helps with the algorithm and just helps me to be able to continue making this content. Thanks. Let's have a look at the multiple camera switcher then. I'm using a Blackmagic Atom Mini Pro ISA. Now, the Atom Mini will actually do what you want this to do, and that's about 300 quid. This one's much more expensive. It's, it has quite a few more features that I talk about in another video, which actually for using on Zoom and things like that is utterly pointless. You don't really need it. But for what I use it for, it's, it's fairly useful. It's an amazing device, the Atom Mini, and it solves quite a few problems. So, one of the great things about the Atom as well is when it's not plugged in, it doesn't show up on your list of cameras, which is one of my gripes about the EOS webcam utility with Canon, which is that when it's not plugged in, it still shows up as a device, which means that if I switch through cameras using the shortcut, Command-Shift-N, it still comes up and it shows this blank page now because the camera isn't sh plugged in, which is really irritating. It kind of means that I can't just switch quickly through my cameras using that shortcut because there's a blank camera. I've actually uninstalled that utility from the studio computer for that very reason. So if I switch to the Atom Mini Pro ISO, I now have a multiple camera switcher that I can switch just with these buttons that are on the Atom. So I've actually got a GoPro, which is set up here, and that's this wide shot that you can see here. I use this camera here, and you can see it's recording this and it's output into the Atom at the same time. It's a great camera. And that is usually, to be honest with you, that is usually in on my guitar, and I just switch it on and off as I need it because otherwise it just runs the battery down. I've then got this other camera here, which is close in on my left hand. And I sometimes plug my iPad in to input four and use that. But you can see, maybe you can see, I don't know, that when I'm talking on this camera, it isn't at the same time on this camera. So we've got a bit of a problem there because there's a delay on the video and it's a hdmi delay it's because it's going through the hdmi cabling before it reaches the computer the solution to that is to use the atom also as the audio input device so i actually use the atom as so you go to the black magic design for my input and now i'm running the audio through the atom and then actually in the Atom software itself, I put a delay on that channel. So what I've done is I've run, I'm going into this 414 here with my voice, la 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 la. I'm going into my preamps and I'm compressing it very slightly at my preamp just to give me a, a cleaner sound. I've got a guitar amp plugged in as well. Not plugged in, mic'd up should I say and I can plug my bass into the preamps as well, which is great. I did a video about Zoom Audio, which I'll link here to some more complicated setup. If it's something that you want me to do some more content about, do let me know in the comments below and I'll do another video about it. But essentially then it comes back out of the Focusrite audio interface or converter and then into the input on the Atom which is then where I'm syncing it up. So I'm putting a four frame delay. So I'm running at 24 frames a second. So it's what, like a sixth of a second, I think. Um, so it's not a huge delay. So again, the Atom Mini does that as well. So if you wanted a cheaper device than the Atom Mini Pro ISO, that's a good way to go. If you have some cameras lying around, I, I, there's no way I'd go out and buy these cameras just for doing lessons on Zoom. I have them because we work here as a studio and I have them for some live events that we film and stream as well. So that's why I have this equipment. I'm just repurposing it for the lessons that I'm teaching at the same time. It seemed to make sense to get more use out of them. But the Atom Mini 
is reasonably affordable. I think it's 270 quid. If you want to have a really great multi-camera thing, then it works and it does work really, really well. There are other features on the Atom which are really cool as well, which I can have a picture in picture. So say if I've got this and I'm close in on my guitar, so if I just grab, grab a guitar. So if I'm close in on my guitar here, now I can also put picture in picture and have me there. And within the software, I can actually move this around in the Atom software. I can make it a little bit larger. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, and I can move it around to anywhere I want on the screen. The new software is particularly good. You can now change which camera. The new software is really good as well for the Blackmagic Switcher, they've changed it. So you can now actually change which one your camera picture in picture is. So now you can see I'm actually using this camera rather than the wide. So that's pretty cool. So if I'm demonstrating something on my guitar here, you can actually see what's going on and I can talk to you properly. It's a bit more like being there face to face rather than it being, you know, like crotch cam or whatever, you know, it's, it's a bit more personable. You can also put graphics on. There's all sorts of stuff that you could do with the Atom. Um, I'll do some videos on that as well if you want. There are some other good videos on YouTube about putting graphics and things like that on. You can use the audio mixer to mix different audio sources as well. So say if you're using uh, your phone or your iPad for a backing track, you can actually input it through the other input here. And again, that could be in sync with the video. You can sync it up in the software. It's really cool. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said before, please do like the video and please do subscribe to the channel. Lots of content coming. I have a beginner guitar course for anybody who's learning to play the guitar and do lots of other music tech orientated things that you could learn about. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments below. Ask me anything. I'm happy to answer whatever you want to know about if I know the answer, which I might, but I might not. Okay, cool. Thank you very much and um, see you soon.